Lions, dogs, cats, all these mammals sleep in pretty comfortable positions. But not whales. They look like giant floating loaves of bread, which is a scene one diver accidentally came across in the Caribbean Sea. Six whales were just standing upright with their tails pointed down at a depth of about 65 feet below the surface. Scientists discovered that when sperm whales take a nap, they stay in this position for 10 to 15 minutes. They don't move or breathe. But these creatures spend only 7% of their time asleep, far less than other mammals. Usually, they either rest peacefully in the water or relax, slowly swimming next to other marine animals. When they're moving and sleeping at the same time, they're actually taking a nap. These animals can't go too deep and need to stay close to the surface. Great white sharks sleep and hunt at greater depths, which means one less thing to worry about when taking a quick nap. Plus, it gets pretty cold the deeper you go. And whales need warmer environments that can help them maintain the temperature of their large bodies. When alone, dolphins enter a stage of deep sleep. It usually happens at night and lasts for only a few hours at a time. While sleeping, the animal floats at the surface. It shuts down half of its brain, I can relate, together with the opposite eye. The other half is at a low alert level, awake and ready to react if some unwanted visitor comes closer. The part of the brain that is awake also sends signals when it's time to go up to the surface to take a breath of fresh air. Marine mammals have the blowhole. That's a flap of skin they can open and close whenever they want. People breathe automatically. Your body knows what it needs to do even when you're sleeping. But whales and dolphins have a voluntary breathing system. It means they need to consciously go to the surface to get some air. And one part of their brain needs to always be awake to inform the animal it's time to go up. Whales and dolphins can hold their breath way longer than other species. They also have a higher tolerance for carbon dioxide and can take in more air. Their red blood cells store more oxygen, too. Whales and dolphins' blood goes only to those body parts that really need oxygen. If a whale only uses its brain, heart, fins, and some other muscles needed for swimming at the moment, those will also be the only body parts that will get the oxygen. Digestion or other functions can wait. The ocean is not a place where you can relax and peacefully fall asleep. While sleeping, fish reduce their activity. Their metabolism becomes slow. Some of them keep floating in the same spot. Others find a safer place among corals or in the mud. Early in life, dolphins learn to make a unique whistle that helps others from their pod to identify them. That means these specific whistles are their names, and dolphins do respond to them. Clams have feet. It looks like a large tongue that sometimes protrudes from the shell, but that's actually the foot. And it's relatively long compared to the length of the animal. Clams use this limb to dig themselves in the sand. The blue whale is the largest living animal, and it's also larger than the majority of dinosaurs used to be. They can grow to more than 100 feet long and have a weight of almost 200 tons. That's like 50 adult elephants. A blue whale's tongue alone can weigh more than one elephant. Such a giant surely needs to eat a lot, half a million calories in just one mouthful. The blue whale's heart is the size of a small car and weighs 1,300 pounds. To move the blood through such a giant body, the heartbeats are so strong you can hear them even from 2 miles away. The heart of a whale beats only 8 to 10 times per minute. The whale is one of the loudest creatures out there. Its call can go up to 180 decibels, which is as loud as a jet plane. Almost 95% of jellyfish's body is made of water. For comparison, the human body is 60% water. It's probably not a surprise since jellyfish don't have a heart, blood, eyes, or brain. The other 5% of their body weight is proteins, muscles, and nerve cells. Jellyfish have been around for more than 500 million years. This makes them older than dinosaurs. These creatures haven't changed much, and today's jellyfish are pretty much like their ancestors. There are plenty of fish in the sea. Some of them look totally like Nemo or Dory. Then there's the butterfly fish and fancy guppy, which is indeed really fancy. And then there's... Ah! What on earth is that? I would definitely not pay for a diving experience to see this guy. 
The anglerfish has the unofficial title of the ugliest animal in the world, but I wouldn't dare to break that news to it. There are more than 200 species of anglerfish currently swimming somewhere in the gloomy depths of the Atlantic and Antarctic Oceans, up to a mile below the surface. Some of them prefer different living conditions, the shallow tropical environments. Different kinds of anglerfish vary in shape and size, from the famous black sea devil to frogfish, monkfish, football fish, goosefish, batfish, and sea toad. The larger ones can be half as long as a full-sized bed, but most are less than a foot long. Since the choice of meals where these guys live isn't that huge, they had to come up with a unique hunting strategy. They don't waste their priceless life energy on following prospective prey. Instead, they use a piece of dorsal spine that sticks above their mouths like a fishing pole, hence the name of the fish. There's a sack of bioluminescent bacteria that glows brightly in the dark at the end of that rod. The light lures prey, and all the anglerfish has to do is wait, and then enjoy its lunch delivered right to its mouth. Their bodies are pliable and huge, so they can easily swallow prey twice their size. Deep sea anglerfish eat whatever they can find. Species that live in more shallow water aren't picky either, and can eat anything from shrimp to snails and small fish. Only female anglerfish have the cool fishing rod feature though. So what about their males? Finding a soulmate deep under the sea isn't that easy. I mean, literally, there's no light down there. Plus, there are frigid temperatures and low oxygen levels. Anglerfish can't afford to go on many dates in those conditions, so they mate for life. And before you go aw about it, I have to tell you, they do it in quite a special way. Male anglerfish are much smaller than their ladies. The contrast is so striking that when researchers first got interested in their love life, they thought those males were actually the offspring, or larvae, hanging out next to their moms. Certain anglerfish male species have receptors that alert them that there's a female nearby. After they mate, the male bites into his woman and stays attached to her head, belly, near her tail, and other areas he can access. While they morph together forever, the female fish gets the male's cells, DNA, and reproductive organs, but loses her immune response cells. The male gets free permanent housing and nutrition. Given the current real estate prices, it sounds like a dream. But that accommodation is shared by up to eight males, and they can't move out if they ever feel like it. You're unlikely to meet this deep sea fish in real life, but if you meet an anglerfish in your favorite video game, remember that you can easily outswim it and make it kinder to you with tranquilizing arrows. Once you befriend it, the anglerfish can be your scout and help you discover new areas with its bioluminescent pods. Back in the real world, down in the twilight zone of the ocean, about 650 to 3300 feet down, the anglerfish isn't the only creature you're lucky you'll probably never meet. Many of the locals look like they come straight out of science fiction or horror movies, but that's because they had to adapt to this dark, deep world. I did my best to get you prepared for the creatures you're going to meet, starting with the common fangtooth. They spend most of their lives deep down, but at night, they move toward the surface to snack. These guys are more active than most other deep sea dwellers. They don't wait for food to come their way, but actually follow it, and then get it with their long, hungry teeth. They don't have a built-in light bulb like the anglerfish, so they've developed a great sense of smell and use as much sunlight as they can get there in the depth to get around. Sometimes, even the shadow of a passing by prospective prey is enough for them to switch to action mode. And though they don't look too charming, they're completely harmless to humans if you ever run into one of these guys. Most of the ocean is still shrouded in mystery, whether we're talking about dark corners or creatures that are hiding in the depths. But sometimes, it gives us a peek into scary things it hides in its cold, dark depths. Like when you hear on the news that there are some deep sea creatures washed ashore after a powerful storm once again. Some just look weird, 
while others are real monsters that live at depths of more than 3,300 feet. The coldest and deepest parts of the ocean have created one specific phenomenon called gigantism. So sea spiders, squids, worms, and many other animals, mostly invertebrates or creatures without backbones, they're all way bigger and scarier than the versions we see in the more shallow areas. In the Pacific depths, you can see a sea sponge as large as a minivan. Or what about the colossal squid that lives in sub-Antarctic waters and is nearly 14 times longer than the arrow squid, a type that mostly lives in New Zealand? Researchers found many of these underwater monsters in the abyssal zone of the ocean. Back in 2021, the researchers showed images of the giant phantom jelly. It was at a depth of 3,200 feet. Its tentacles were 33 feet long. Wow, I wouldn't like to face that one on the beach. It probably eats only small fish and plankton, but it can swim to depths of more than 21,900 feet. And down there, this giant jelly doesn't have enough food. How does it survive then? Scientists haven't figured it out yet. And there are even more questions related to the giant squid, the biggest one ever found. This monster is 43 feet long, with a weight of nearly a ton. Imagine if those tentacles would grab your car, or something like that. They would smash it like it was a toy. There's no light in the abyssal zone. Sun rays just can't penetrate that deep. So there's no algae or underwater plants there. Local animals mostly eat snow. Marine snow is not like the regular one you build a snowman with. It consists of any small flakes or remains that fall from the surface of the ocean. Maybe even some leftovers that animals up there couldn't eat. So it's not much. But apparently, it's enough for very large creatures that hide deep down there, like giant squids. Squids that generally live at such depths don't bother going after their prey. They just wait until the poor animal swims right up to their long tentacles and falls into a trap. It may not be the best method ever, because not many animals will even swim into these dark, cold parts. But it's the method that saves energy. A giant squid eats only one ounce of fish daily, which is approximately 45 calories. That's nearly 50 times fewer calories than an average person should eat per day. So when a squid gets one fish, it saves it for a couple of days. I hope giant squids won't get the idea to go to the surface and look for food when there's not enough of it in the abyssal zone. And I hope even more that giant Greenland sharks won't get that same idea. You can find them at depths of up to 7,200 feet. They're twice as slow as we usually walk. They swim at a speed of 1.12 feet per second. Their slowness is part of the energy-saving mechanism that creatures down there need to survive but they can speed up in the form of short bursts when they need to catch prey. But they kind of change their diet from predator to scavenger, considering their environment. There will be more leftovers falling from the surface than animals to go after. Greenland sharks grow just 0.4 inches per year, and they're mostly 20 feet long, which means they live for a very long time, sometimes up to 400 years. They also have a slow metabolism, and that's one of the main factors for their long life, too. Greenland sharks like to spend their time in cold waters. They're adapted to that, since their tissues have specific chemical compounds that prevent the forming of ice crystals all over their body. That means they have some sort of natural antifreeze. So what makes them so big? Scientists are still not sure, but some theories try to explain it. There's this thing called Kleiber's Rule, that says bigger animals tend to be more efficient. Just take a small fish and compare it to a whale with a mass hundreds of times bigger. The whale has a greater metabolism. It conserves energy more efficiently and loses less of it to the surroundings through heat. The Heikegani crab lives off the coast of Japan and has a distinct pattern on its shell that looks like a human face. More specifically, the face of an angry samurai hence the nickname, the Samurai Crab. The scarlet-striped cleaning shrimp is a natural hitchhiker. It stands on the sea floor and waves its long antennae for fish and sea animals to go down and pick it up. 
Then it pays for the ride by cleaning the host from bacteria and plankton. Sea salps are often confused with jellyfish, although they're closer to Portuguese man-o-war. They're very quick to mature, growing from newborns to adults in less than 48 hours. The Galapagos Islands are legendary. They've got giant tortoises, blue-footed boobies, Sally Lightfoot crabs, and red-lipped batfish. But if you've ever swum around there, you might have seen something really unexpected in the water. Iguanas! Everywhere! These large marine reptiles eat the algae that grow on underwater rocks. They're strict vegetarians. I bet the fish are happy about that. A long flat tail designed for swimming helps them move around, and sharp claws keep them on the rocks for their daily sunbathing sessions. But watch them closely, they sneeze a lot. They haven't got a cold or anything, they're sneezing out salt. A special gland keeps the salt out of their nose, and they've got to get rid of it somehow. Sounds painful. What's cool is that they don't mind us in the water with them. Because the islands have been so isolated, the creatures here aren't afraid of humans. Fish can fly too. Thanks to their wing-like fins, flying fish can soar a distance of about 600 feet, almost as long as two football fields. They need flight to escape from predators. The skeleton shrimp could be the stuff of nightmares if it wasn't so tiny. As it is, it looks like a stick insect, but almost completely transparent. This creature looks more like a fish from a horror movie than from Earth's oceans. The sea devil anglerfish resides at a whopping depth of 3,200 feet and has no shortage of weird features. Razor-sharp teeth, a misshapen body, and an unsettling stare. But perhaps the creepiest thing about the sea devil anglerfish is the way it catches its prey. It has a fishing rod type appendage on its forehead that has a glowing light attached to the end to attract animals. Once these animals come close enough to the light, bam, they're captured by the sea devil's massive jaws. These guys are even capable of eating prey larger than they are. So their eyes aren't bigger than their stomachs. Starfish can cover their prey with their stomachs and eat it outside its body. Then they simply bring their stomachs back inside. Well, that's handy. Their relatives, sea cucumbers, can do the same party trick, except that they leave part of their guts behind to scare their attacker. It's okay, the missing parts quickly grow back. Cockatoo squids, or glass squids, are a large genus whose members can reach quite impressive size. Yet one thing they have in common is that their bodies are transparent and the internal organs glow in the dark. Despite the hairy octopus looking like it's forgotten to comb its hair in the morning, it's actually its skin that's sticking in every direction. Other sea creatures have a harder time realizing where the octopus itself is this way, I guess. The hairy squat lobster lives in reefs, hiding from its enemies in crevices. If you're lucky to see it, you'll instantly notice the drastic difference between its whitish hairs and vibrant pink and violet claws. If you step on a sea urchin, you're gonna know right away. Look at those spikes. While they're not aggressive, they've got a great defense going against any creature that wants to eat them. Venomous spikes and a poisonous bite. <laughs> Pick your poison, literally. They live in all the oceans of the world, so avoiding them is out of the question. They mostly hang out in shallow water, hiding in rock pools and reefs. So unmindful people step on them a lot. The long venomous spikes of the urchin look like needles. They feel like them too. They can go in quite deep. Plus, they release a strong toxin. So, what's the cure? Remove the spikes quickly and wash with salt water. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.